Okay, as Scott said, my name is Brian Carlson. I work at GitHub. Uh, I, until recently, was one of the uh, GitLFS maintainers, and uh, this is primarily driven by the needs of GitLFS, but um, from what I've heard on the list, it's actually very uh, generally useful. So this is uh, the Git Credential Helper Protocol, and what's new, this is, I believe, in 246. So it's, it's very new. Um, so the Credential Helper Protocol has originally been designed to let Git use arbitrary backends to get and store credentials securely. And it can be used even with a shell one-liner to read from the environment, which we have in the Git vac as an option. So it's designed to be very extensible and very simple. And it provides a cross-platform framework that works with any operating system. It can work with the Windows Credential Manager, Mac OS Keychain, the secret on Linux, or your favorite password manager. And this model has actually inspired other tools like Docker and Rust Package Manager Cargo that have built similar uh, credential helpers for their tools. And in Git, it's used for HTTP, uh, IMAP, SMTP, and TLS private key credentials. We don't use it for SSH, simply because SSH has its own handling of credentials. So the way it works is Git uh, has a cr the Git credential binary. And when Git actually needs credentials, it doesn't call these, but you can call these functions. Um, and it calls Git credential fill, and it takes a request on standard input, and it prints the result on standard output. So it's basically just a pipe. It's just in, in the middle of two pipes. And the credential helper is queried until both the username and password are found. So if the first helper just provides a username, then it will keep going on through the helpers until it finds both the username and password. And this is how it's traditionally worked, and it will work a little differently as of 2.6. So on success, every credential helper is provided with successful credentials. The get credential approved. We pipe in the successful credentials. Every credential helper is notified and gets the opportunity to store them. On failure, same thing, we pipe it in, but to get credential reject, and every credential helper is supposed to simply remove them. Whether it does so is up to it, but that's the intention. So here's an example of what it looks like to uh, use get credential fill. On the input, we have the protocol, the host. If you specify to use a path, a per path credential, then it has a path field, and then it has this www field, which is, has brackets because you could have multiple of them. And this is the www authenticate header in HTTP. And so in this case, we have a basic authentication and for the realm example.com. And the response looks like the same output, except we have username and password. Um, we don't need to specify the www authenticate header because we're not making an HTTP request. So um, the response includes the username and password. And this has worked for many, many years and many, many versions. And in the future, we're going to have, uh, as of 246, some additional improvements. And that's because there are some problems with this. Not all authorization schemes have a username and password. If you're using OAuth bearer, it's just a token, maybe with some parameters. So this isn't flexible enough to deal with that. Um, some authentication schemes like NTLM and Kerberos require two round trips. So they will need uh, multiple, uh, multiple round trips in order to do that, and you can't do that this way. Um, right now, if you have a, an ephemeral credential, it's stored as long term. Uh, and so you can end up with a situation where your temporary token is stored in other credential helpers. And if you have multiple credentials, um, it can be hard to identify which one you're talking about. In, if you have a username, that can be helpful, but not all credentials, as we've seen, have usernames. And so that doesn't always work uh, here. So there is one functionality that people would like to use for bearer tokens, which is HTTP.extra header. And this basically just tells Git to add an arbitrary extra header. And Git always adds the header. Um, but the value is static and it can't easily be changed. So if you want ephemeral tokens, if you want uh, per request data, that doesn't work. And it also stores data insecurely in the config file. 
which is easily leaked. It's banned if you leak your repository, but that actually happens very frequently. And what is much worse is if you leak your repository and the credentials in it, because then the attacker gets all future versions of your repository and maybe they can, can write to it as well. So you don't want to do that. Um, and this doesn't always work with Git LFS because Git always adds the header. So does Git LFS, but Git LFS adds its own authentication in parts of the protocol. And so then you end up with two authorization headers. And predictably, that doesn't work very well because it's unclear which one you're supposed to use. So one of the things we've looked at for improvements here is some design, some uh, capabilities to, def to identify what functionality help or get supports. So we know we can add functionality. The protocol ignores things it doesn't understand. So we can simply add capabilities so that the helper knows what functionality we're going to support. We can also, uh, we also want credential helpers to continue to be extremely limited in functionality. We want to be able to use shell one liners for this purpose and have that be work and be robust. We want some sort of state so credential helpers can keep track of multiple requests or what credential they're using and store the data in the proper way. We want to operate with multiple round trips um, with, we want MTLM and Kerberos to be possible. We don't really want to use MTLM and don't want people to use it because cryptography has been insecure since 1995. Um, so please don't, please don't do that. But we want that to be able to live in a credential helper so that people who really want to use, you know, party like it's 1995 can, can, uh, can do so. Um, and we want it to be flexible enough to work with non-HTTP requests. We want it to work with IMAP and SMTP. It doesn't now, but we want it to be flexible enough to do it in the future. And we want to support common major authentication types like Barrett. So here's an example of, it's a bit truncated, my apologies, um, is that we have the capability with auth type and the protocol, um, which has HTTPS. And in this case, we have a bare authentication. And what we have here in the response is we also have an auth type capability. And notice the capabilities come first. Um, that's so we can do one pass parsing. Um, and the auth type field here is bearer. And then there's a credential field, which is not visible on this slide, which contains the token. And so we just concatenate the auth type field and the credential with space. And it's really that simple. So you can specify any arbitrary protocol fields, protocol format, whatever works for your format, it's acceptable. And then there's an ephemeral equals one field, which says this is an ephemeral credential. Don't attempt to store it long term if you don't know about it. We use a credential field here instead of a password field because we want uh, to avoid credential helpers that don't know about this functionality from accidentally using it as a password. Maybe that isn't secure and we want to avoid that from happening. So you can see here an example of what the credentials look like. And the benefits are that the capabilities come first. We have one pass parsing. The authentication scheme is clearly stated. It's not, um, if you're using Azure DevOps, you can use NTLM with a username and password, but you can use basic or bearer with a with token. So in this case, there's no ambiguity which you're using. You're, you can't misuse the credential with a different authentication type. Um, and so that's clear, so you can specify different kinds of authentication with different formats. The credential field can contain arbitrary data for the pro protocol. We have ephemeral credentials that can be stated, and we're avoiding the, the confusion between credential and password. And here we have uh, a Kerberos-based uh, authentication example. And um, the, we have the auth type and state capabilities. And the auth type capability is, uh, is designed to specify the auth type and credential, and the state prefers, preserves its state over the request. So we can specify a, which is unfortunately not, uh, unfortunately it's not showing up on the slide, um, but we can specify the state which, which state to use for the next round. 
And then we have a continue equals one field, which says that this is a multi-round request. So in this case, we're expecting to make two round trips and we're going to make another round trip. Uh, so if we get a 401 response, that means we should not fail. Normally, if we get a 401 response, we'll say this is a failure and we should uh, erase the credentials. In this case, we're going to say we're going to continue on and do another round. And then we have next time we pass that same state field here and it's specific to the helper. So we can, so if we have multiple credential helpers contributing to this request, we can actually store state per credential helper and pass it back in. And the next time we send another credential field and another alt type, and then we don't send the continue field. So we know that it's a, the 401 response we get is a, is a failure. So we have our additional round trips clearly indicated through continue. So we know whether this is a multiple round trip protocol, it will limit it to three round trips. So if you have come up with a custom scheme that is super complex and requires multiple round trips, you'll have to condense it down, sorry. But we can preserve state over multiple rounds or to identify a specific credential. Um, I think the OSX keychain helper is now using this functionality uh, for this purpose. So that's, a, that's useful. And we can implement effectively arbitrary credential schemes because we have this, these, um, these fields and we don't constrain them. Now, we want to know maybe what capabilities Git and a helper support. Do they support any of this? We don't use this in Git, but it is designed for uh, shell scripts and scripting functionality so that users can identify what capabilities we support. And we want to gracefully handle those one-line shell scripts that don't understand any of this and are just going to choke on it. So you now have a uh, functionality called Git Credential Capability. And when you run that, it prints a version number and the capabilities that are supported. And you can also do the same thing with the Credential Helper. Right now, only Git Credential Cache and the OSX Keychain Helper support this functionality, but you can pipe uh, standard input to dev null. And that allows you to, that allows the helper to not accidentally try to read from standard input like it would by default. And so we can see that the cache helper only supports auth type, but Git supports auth type and state. And so they're distinct uh, format from the helper protocol so that if you have one of those helpers that just prints the standard output, without thinking about it, we don't have to worry about that. It will be detected as not matching version zero and we'll just skip it. Or if it gets non-zero exit status, we assume it supports nothing. And that way we don't have to worry about uh, helpers that are very simple and that don't understand this functionality that have been working for a long time. Like the one in the Git fact that reads from the environment. Uh, we've added a whole bunch of documentation here. So there is documentation for the protocol in Git Credential 7, and the Git Credential command in Git Credential 1 explains the functionality. You can also look at the Credential Cache Helper, which has added this functionality and is pretty straightforward. Um, and if you find the documentation is uh, not as good as you'd like, please send a mail to the list, and uh, we'll be happy to update it. Uh, I try, I've tried to make it wonderful, but also I developed this extension, so um, I have maybe not explained it as well as I could. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much.